the best camera for wedding photography in 2024. I'm not just gonna recommend expensive things like this Leica M11 monochrome for no reason or the Sony A9 Mark III, which is incredible, but it's just way too expensive for wedding photography. I'm gonna take budget and features into consideration and give you my recommendations for all current camera brands. I'm Taylor Jackson. I've been a wedding photographer for over 15 years now. I photographed at my peak up to 70 weddings per year. Uh, that's not really a sustainable thing. You can do that for a few years before it starts to make you go a little bit crazy. I photographed over 1,000 weddings in my career across all camera brands. So I think that's something that makes this channel a little bit unique is that I actually use this stuff out on real life wedding days. And I'm not just looking at spec sheets and suggesting cameras based on that. They're things that I've actually used and that I've actually used over a long period of time. And also if you're watching this in the first couple weeks of January up until January 12th, which is the cutoff, you can get an incredible deal. Maybe the best deal in all of wedding photography education right now. Book More Weddings 2024 has been updated. It comes with my new flash mini course where I talk about some new things that I'm doing like this flash on a string, as well as how I just typically use flash on a wedding day on camera as well as off camera. Plus, if you get into Book More Weddings before January 12th, you also get some other nice bonus videos like the three keys to success in 2024. Next bonus video, my road to 100,000 dollars as a wedding photographer and more bonus videos how to build a three hundred thousand dollar per year hybrid studio as well as my new preset pack and even more bonuses there's also a bonus gift if you are one of the first 25 people to pick up book more weddings updated for 2024 link is down below if you're interested in that let's get to the best cameras for 2024 wedding photography I phrased that incorrectly. First up, let's talk about Sony. Sony has uh, completed or, or nearly completed a come from behind victory in the minds and hearts of photographers. They have been making cameras. Uh, they bought Minolta and they've been making cameras for the shortest period of time, at least in the consumer market, but they were the first, I think, to go mirrorless or to go mirrorless in the pro line. And they have definitely been pushing the envelope of what's been possible and making Canon and Nikon catch up when it comes to autofocus and also video features. But video might be out of scope of what your needs are as a wedding photographer. So I'm not gonna focus too much on that. My recommendation for Sony is the Sony a7 IV. While I do shoot the a7R Mark V a lot, you don't really need the high megapixels for a wedding day. In my real life experience, side by side, the autofocus, while there is that new fancy AI chip and the newer Sony cameras, I don't really feel my Sony a7 IV lacking. It gives you everything you need at a great price point. There are used ones available on the market now. It is important as a wedding photographer to have two cameras, to have your main one as well as a backup. And it's entirely possible that rather than having one main camera body and one discount secondhand body, you could potentially get two Sony a7 IVs, which is very, very nice. There's a huge suite of lenses. They make 1.4 lenses as well, which I am so happy about because Canon and Nikon seem to be disregarding the 1.4 market, which is a bummer because I feel like it's the perfect blend of quality, shallowed up the field, as well as price and size. And even though the Sony a7 IV is, I think, two years old at this point, is still my recommendation for the Sony ecosystem for wedding photographers. Next up, Nikon. Nikon did the come from behind. Uh, they really caught up and they caught up in an incredible way. And I would probably consider the Nikon ZF or ZF, depending on which country you're from, as one of the most interesting cameras for wedding photographers across all brands. It really does a lot for a low price point and the Nikon 1.8 lenses are amazing and there's a lot available on the used market and they just, the form factor is very, very nice. I would not recommend shooting the 1.2 glass on the Nikon ZF, the, the grip, even with the extension grip, it's not there, I don't think. And my arm is actually still recovering from using the 51.2 uh, with the Nikon ZF with the grip uh, for two wedding days in a row. And it's just not the correct balance for an all-day wedding camera. The other benefit, uh, I should have mentioned this in the Sony uh, section as well, the Tamron 35 to 150 as well as the Samyang 35 to 150 exists for Sony. The Tamron 35 to 150 exists for Nikon now, and that makes me so happy. That is, uh, I would say, an absolutely go-to ceremony lens as well as a lens you could just shoot the entire day with. I'm happy with the megapixel size of the Nikon ZF as well. We'll talk about Canon next where the megapixels get borderline but still maybe okay. I'm happy with all the technical specs. I'm happy with the files. I'm happy with the low light autofocus. And all things considered, I would say the ZF is not only one of my more favorite wedding photography cameras, but also the camera that I'm probably gonna bring with me for any personal projects that I don't wanna bring this to, because maybe I wanna shoot in color and this the raw files are literally in black and white. Nikon ZF, next up, Canon. Going back a couple years now, the Canon R6. So the original, I'm gonna recommend. The updates for the Canon R6 II were mostly for video. Um, there was nothing really that I noticed that made the photography experience a lot better. So I would rather save that money, buy something secondhand. Again, you can probably pick up two Canon R6s on the used market, and that way you have two cameras that are exactly the same, your files are gonna be the same, your brain's gonna be a little bit happier. So yeah, if you're looking at the Canon ecosystem and you're like, I, should I go for the R3? No, I shot that for, I think, 
maybe two, three months of weddings. Uh, it was nice. I used it because I could get nice 4K60 with no overheating. But again, that's from my video, my video helmet that I have to wear sometimes. And that worked really well for that. I also don't see the, the, the Canon R5 as great. It's a lot of megapixels. I don't find myself needing them on a wedding day. And I would rather buy two Canon R6s rather than an R5, if that math roughly checks out. Maybe if you have an interest in landscape photography and you want those big megapixel prints, it might make sense to also go as a, an R5 as your main camera with then maybe an R6 as a second. Um, personally, for me, I am okay with the megapixel count of the R6. If it was any lower, I might reconsider, but I am okay happy with it. And Lindsay's been shooting the Canon R6 and the R6 Mark II for the past years, uh, basically since they came out. And I spent a full season, uh, maybe a full season and a half on the original Canon R6, and I was very, very, very happy with it. So there it is, the wrap up, Sony. A7 IV would be my recommendation for 2024. The Canon R6, not the Mark II, just the original is fine if you're just doing wedding photography. If you're also doing a lot of video coverage, the R6 Mark II might make a little bit more sense. On the Nikon side of things, Nikon ZF or ZF, I'm very, very, very happy with that camera. And if you're like, where'd Fuji go? I didn't shoot any Fuji cameras this year at a wedding. So that is a bit of a bummer. So I don't have, I feel bad giving a recommendation based on a product that I haven't actually used. I'd recommend you go check out John Branch's channel. Uh, he does a lot of Fuji content. And uh, if I had to just give you a recommendation that I think is accurate, the X-T5 would be my go-to if I was looking into the Fuji ecosystem. And I wanted something basically with good autofocus. That was the big upgrade when the, the Fuji film, the Hattus, the H2S came out, it allowed Fujifilm to autofocus a lot closer to a Canon or Sony, or Nikon is now right up there as well. Uh, I feel like all the brands for autofocus, I'm pretty happy with overall. And if you're interested, until January 12th, you can get in on Book More Weddings updated for 2024, get those bonus videos, and it comes with a lot of bonuses if you get in before January 12th, 2024. Also, the price on it is ridiculous. I feel like I'm gonna get some messages from other educators and be like, you're ruining the industry, but I guess that's positive for you right now. I got to deal with that at WPPI and Imaging USA. It's fine. I don't mind. Any questions about any cameras, feel free to put them in the comments below and I myself will get back to you or somebody that knows a little bit more about whatever you're asking will hopefully help you out. See ya.